All right, guys. Today we're going to be talking about time ordering and the contraction of fields. This is going to be a fun topic. It's going to be something new and fresh. We've talked about normal ordering. Now we're going to be talking about time ordering. If you recall, normal ordering uh, talked about placing fields with respect to each other in terms of creation and annihilation operators. Today we're going to be talking about time ordering, which is placing fields with respect to each other uh, regarding uh, their arguments, right? X and Y. X and Y are points in space-time. And so we're going to try to order them according to what the X what their temporal components are, not what their, um, not, not what their uh, uh, creation annihilation, uh, annihilation operators are. Anyways, if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get into the content now. So we're talking about time ordering and the contraction of fields. So time ordering of an operator is very, very important. What we're going to do is we're going to define exactly what it means first. So the time ordering of an operator field is uh, this, right? So this is the time ordering. We put this T in front of our fields, and this T in front of our fields means uh, that our fields equal this if Tx is um, or, or Xt, the temporal component of this time point, of this space-time point is greater than the temporal component of this space-time point. That means the, the argument here is, uh, happens further in time than the argument here. So this is the initial field, um, and then this is the field right after, the field configuration right after. Whereas this is a field configuration if x of t is less than y of t, right? So, be, so essentially we're saying... If one comes first, then it kind of, then it's going to be operating first. That's time ordering. So let's see what exactly <clears throat> this means in terms of sandwiching this thing in between two states, two particle states. Right. So if we have a particle state that looks like this zero, and we want to compare it to a particle state that looks like this, that means that we are taking this guy and this guy, right? So y and x, x and y, right? This is the time, <clears throat> we're time ordering. And then we put this theta function in front of both, right? So the theta function here is going to be, um, the argument is, there's two input arguments. And these two input arguments are going to be x and y, the temporal components of x and y. <clears throat> If, <clears throat> excuse me, this temporal component is going to select out the parts of, it's going to select out the, uh, it's going to be zero at anywhere that is, um, that's less than the argument inside. And one or a constant anywhere that's beyond the argument inside, or not beyond, but that is greater than the argument inside. And so, a sense. So what this? So we can kind of ignore this a little bit, but just to be complete, is that we're taking the difference between the two time points, right? <clears throat> and when you take the difference between the two time points, what we're doing is. We are saying that's either we're putting assigning zero or one to that, right? So this theta looks like the theta function itself looks like this. Actually, I'll do it at I'll do it here. All right, so if x minus y, if x zero minus y zero is uh, right here, right? Say this, say this is z zero, which is equal to x zero minus y zero. Well then anything beyond, anything beyond that point um, 
in this direction is going to be 1. All right, so this is saying that essentially if x is greater than y, if x is greater than y, then that means we're looking at this portion of the graph, right? Because x being greater than y, we're looking at anything positive here. If y is greater than x, right, that's going to be anything negative, right? And so this sort of makes sense, right? Because if y was greater than x, we're looking at, before I erase it, we're looking at negative portions of this graph. And so that's going to be, that's going to be zero. So these theta functions are, are used when we're selecting out uh, negative, anything negative or anything positive in, a, in some sort of function. So we have that now. So what we want, so what we found earlier is that we can sandwich the, the, the commutator between these two things together, be, between these two states, if the normal ordering, if we consider the normal ordering of this and the normal ordering of this, because a normal ordering sandwiched between two of the operators of the, that, are, that are the same goes to zero. That's the whole point of no, that's one of the whole points of normal ordering, so that these calculations can become easier, and it makes physical sense also. Um, and the the reason I, the reason again it makes physical sense is because I, I wouldn't say it makes phys, it makes physical sense. I, I would say in normal ordering, when you do that, what you get is uh, calculations that are essentially simpler because this this here reduces down to a commutator between parts of these fields. So that, that, that's how it becomes easier. And we do the same thing here. And then we take the, uh, the states out because we can realize that the this here is, is just an operator uh, that can be taken out. And um, that looks like this. This looks like that, right? So... Is that what I'm doing here is that essentially this is here I will move the sky just to make this a little clearer All right this is what I'm doing and we get this we get this this is one this is one and so we get this here. So you might think, okay, what is, what's this guy? This guy right here, this guy right here, this guy right here is called the contraction of two fields. We're going to say that the contraction of two fields is equal to this right here. Okay. If you recall, when we uh, did our normal ordering, we said that the, the normal ordering of some field was equal to all of the, um, it was equal to all of the fields being placed uh, to the right of our equations, right? So that means, uh, th again, we were talking about how uh, we want the annihilation operators to come first, and then we do the creation operators. The reason you do that again is because when you annihilate, um, uh, when when you annihilate a particle that takes it down to zero, you have no particles, and if that's zero, zero times anything is just zero. Right? That's what that was the beauty behind the normal ordering. And when we, so it's so that was normal ordering, and we made sense of the normal ordering in the context of this commutation relationship where uh, the com we took the commutation relationship between uh, these two fields, right? We took the commutation relationship between these two fields and we said that um, because of the normal ordering, we were, we were able to reduce a lot of our calculations to merely just this commutation relationship. And this commutation relationship, we said, was a propagator. Okay? So, we're defining this now, we're defining these now to be, to look like, to look something like this. 
So this is what's called the contraction of two fields. And so this contraction of two fields looks like this, right? So we're taking these two guys and we're putting them both in one definition. Okay. You can see the order here is the same as the order here, even though the arguments here and here sort of, are, are, they're scrambled between this, this guy here and this guy here. The reason we're doing that is because we're, we are defining this guy right here. This is this guy and this guy to be these two guys right here. So if, so, so if you follow, another way to think of this, again, is to think of we're going to take two things and put them, put them in one definition. So this is a propagator. This is a propagator. We're putting these two propagators inside the definition of this, and then we're calling this contracting the, contracting the field. Contracting the field is putting two propagators into sort of... We're defining two propagators together, and the propagators are, we, we use one propagator over the other depending on uh, the time component of each one, right? So if the time component of one is greater than the time component of the other, we use that form. Whereas if, uh, what we could say is this form right here, but if the time component of the other one, of, of this guy here is greater, then we're going to use this form right here. So we have propagators, we're putting two propagators into one definition, and by doing that, we are saying that we're going to use one propagator if the time component of one is greater than the other, okay? That's how we, that's how we want to think about this physically. Now, so, so if we say that this, is, so we're going to make this stipulation here now, because we found that... Um, we found earlier that this guy here, this was another video. This was in our last video. So, I'll just, we want to compare this guy right here. So what we got last time, so our commutator again was something, I'm just putting that right here, I don't want to write the whole thing out, but this was from our last video. And we are saying now that, suppose now, suppose we take the time, the, the time, compo or the, the time um, ordering of these two fields to equal this. So it looks similar. Right? We have the normal ordering. We just have something different here. So then from a previous result, again, I didn't have to write all this out, but pre this is a previous result from last video. This is the previous result. We can, we get that this guy is equal to this guy minus these guys, right? We're really just taking, we're taking this side this guy here, this commutation relationship to this side of the equation, and we're fitting the, that into the definition here for the normal ordering. We rearrange a few things, and this is what we get. So if x, if the time component of our x space-time point is greater than the one for y, then we get this all right here, and then we get this, and we find out that this is indeed equal to this, so this relationship here so far holds for if x is greater than y. Let's see what it is for if y is greater than x, y zero, x zero. I'm just, um, uh, I'm using, uh, I'm saying x and y when I should say x zero and y zero. Uh, we get, so if, so if y zero is greater than x zero, we are going to get something that looks like this instead, right? So this, again, is coming from this relationship and this relationship. We're getting this relationship here. 
So if y0 is greater than x0, we're using this right here. So we're going to use this guy in place of this guy. And what we get is this. Now, if we recall that these two things are propagators, they look like this. These propagators, again, they uh, are essentially are a, 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 a way of getting from x to y in our fields. Okay, the, that's what these propagators are. We get that x, that this side of the equation, which is right here, these two guys, is equal to yx. Right, because here's our yx, these two guys are the same, or they're not the same actually, uh, they're the same if we recall this, right, because the difference between y and x here and the difference between y and x here is the same. So that means these two guys are the same if we have the, the, the negative one and the positive of the other, they're going to cancel out. These two guys are going to go to zero, and that means um, that this here is indeed equal to the reverse, the time reversed part um, here, okay? So hopefully that all made sense. Uh, I tried to go through the der derivation as thoroughly as I could. And so in summary, time ordering looks like this. So we, we talked about time ordering. Time ordering again was ordering with respect to the space time point. And contracting is uh, is defined by this right here. So contracting um, is defined by the propagators, okay? So the time-ordered field, so through, so through, all, through, all, through all of this here, so we found out that this was true, we found out this result, so therefore we stipulated this guy right here, and so what we can say is that the time ordered field is equal to the normal ordered field plus the field contraction. You can also think of the field contraction as the difference between the time ordered and the normal ordered field. So that is a time ordering and that is normal ordering. Again, these are, this is the type of stuff you start getting into when you start getting into more intermediate quantum field theory. Um, once this stuff starts to get, you guess you, once you start to get a handle on this kind of stuff, then reading um, uh, reading quantum field theory textbooks, I think, actually becomes a lot easier. Uh, a lot of this is very esoteric at first, and it's very, very... Uh, you, you question if you can actually understand this kind of stuff. But if you, stare, if you stare at it long enough, and if you work with it long enough, then you will eventually understand it. And I think, um, especially with this time ordering and normal ordering, I, I will admit it took me a while to understand as well. And so that, that's time ordering and that's normal ordering. Normal, so they're both going to be very important. They're going to be very useful in helping us uh, do calculations with respect to scattering amplitudes. And um, and yeah, that's that's going that's that's going to be the story of our life for the next uh, for the next couple of videos. Scattering. So with that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.